are you more like Pontius Pilate or Yeshua? You see, the truth of the matter is this. You are going to be like one of these individuals. You are either going to be someone who makes the right decisions for his life and is pleasing to God, or you are going to be like Pilate, who made the wrong decision and is for eternity regretting that terrible error. And it's more than just an error, it is a sin. Now I realize that people don't like to hear that word sin. People are much more comfortable with the word error or mistake or wrong behavior. But, but sin is a very important word and it's spiritual in origin. People don't mind saying, I've made many mistakes in my life. But, but ask them, have you made many sins? They're not so comfortable to say that. Because sin is an offense, first and foremost, against God. And many people aren't comfortable with a reality of God. They don't want there to be in God, there to be a God. Why? Well, remember what the psalmist says. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, a fool, in this word, in the Hebrew language, means someone who knows one thing to be true, but he says or does the exact opposite. That's a fool. So when the scripture says, the fool has said into their heart, there is no God, he knows that there is a God. So why does he say that? Because he wants to be able to do whatever he wants to do. In other words, if he knew that there was a God and he confessed that, then he would have to act very differently, and he doesn't want to do that. And we're going to see that is very much like Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate is going to be conflicted with the truth, that he is in danger of making a great sin. But is he willing to humble himself and do the right thing? The answer is going to be, no, he's not. And why? Why doesn't he make the right decisions? Well, for the same reason that you and I don't because of self we, we really doubt the things of God and we want to focus in on what we think is going to be best how we read the situation and that is a disastrous formula for making decisions what's best for us how we see it no we need to have God's perspective well take out your Bible and look with me to John's gospel and chapter 19 we see that, that Pontius Pilate, although he wanted to end this matter with Yeshua and have Barabbas go, go uh, 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 to death rather than Yeshua, the people chose Barabbas. And he says for the third time, I have found nothing guilty in this man. And finally he says, if you want him to be crucified, you take him and crucify him. But what did the leadership says? The leadership, oh, we can't do that because we have a law. And this one needs to die because he has made himself to be the son of God. And when Pontius Pilate heard that, that Yeshua was the son of God, well, he became greatly afraid. And notice what he did. Look with me to verse 8. We read, Therefore, when Pilate heard this word, he became greatly afraid, verse 9, and he went into the judgment hall, and he says to Yeshua, from where are you? Now, this is so important because he was convicted that Yeshua was not just that typical man. He was being burdened. His heart was being provoked that Yeshua was indeed the Son of God. And he asked Yeshua. Well, in reality, Pontius Pilate already had known the truth at this time, that Yeshua was the Son of God. And it's for this reason, notice, middle of verse 9, and Yeshua, an answer, did not give to him. Gave none. See, Pontius Pilate had to make a decision for himself. And what did he do? Look at verse 10. Therefore, Pilate says to him, to me, you not speak? Do you not know that I have authority to crucify you 
and I have authority to set you free. Now, Pilate goes back to his power card because he has an important position. So he wants to intimidate Yeshua and he says, don't you know? I have the authority to crucify you. What a horrible, torturous death that that would be. Or in a moment, I can just say the words and you go free. Therefore, he wants Yeshua to submit to him. Well, Yeshua is not about submitting to man. Yeshua submits to his father's plan, his father's word, his father's will. And it's only when we begin to realize that the great authority over our life should be the only authority is God. Now, we can submit to those who have an earthly authority, that is, our boss, our parents, a teacher in school, a police officer, a judge, all these things, it's fine to acknowledge their earthly authority. And in one sense, Yeshua was doing that. He wasn't running away. He wasn't uh, uh, trying to, to, in some way, avoid this trial. But ultimately, when we talk about true authority, it's God. And therefore, Yeshua was not going to be intimidated to submit to Pilate's threat. And that is what this is all about. Yeshua answers, you do not have authority whatsoever over me, except what has been given to you from above. Now, in actuality, Yeshua answered his question he wanted to know where are you from Yeshua and what does Yeshua end his sentence with from above that's the answer and what he's telling Pilate is I know how this world operates I know who put you in this position and it's my heavenly father so it's very very important that he ends this sentence by saying You have no authority over me except what has been given to you from above. On account of this, the one who has delivered me to you has a greater sin. Now, here again, if you notice how the scripture is coming together here, the way it's written, what is being emphasized, he says, you are using your authority for sin. But the one who initiated this process, the one who turned me over to you, has done a greater sin because they have set the stage. They are leading you to carry out sin. And that teaches us several important theological truths, and that is this. Not all sin is equal. Now, what I mean by that is this. Obviously, there are things that violate the Word of God They're wrong, they are are a sin, but there are different degrees of sin. That's why we have different punishments in a worldly sense from the Torah. Someone steals something, they have to restore it, and they have to put an additional payment on it. So there's different punishments for different sins according to the Word of God. But when we talk about the payment for sin in regard to redemption. It doesn't matter how small or how great the sin is, it's only the blood of Messiah that, that, that reconciles the sinner back to God. So in one sense, all sins are equal in the sense that it's Messiah's blood that atones, that redeems for sinfulness, all sins. But obviously there are different degrees of, of sinfulness when we look at it from a behavior standpoint. And Yeshua is saying something. He is saying that the one who delivered me over to you is of a greater sinfulness. Now, why is that important? The answer is this. Yeshua has placed upon the table sin. And how someone responds to sin, whether they're convicted by that or whether they ignore it, tells a lot about their spiritual condition whether they are a candidate for redemption or whether they're not. And when we read here, look again, verse verse 12. On account of this, Pilate was seeking to have him released, meaning to release him. Now, there's a major problem with that verse. And what is that problem? Pilate had said, just 
One verse earlier. 